This video is sponsored by Artisan Fountain Pens. Click the link in the description to find out more. You know, you honestly couldn't make this stuff up. I don't record for months on end. We have catastrophic bushfires, a drought, and the day I try to record, we get some of the worst rain that we've had in five years. Go figure. Honestly, sometimes I think my luck is uh, always against me. But with that aside, let me just say, welcome back. JPL here after, I don't know, an absence of a couple months or so. And uh, it's nice to be back. It's nice to spend a little bit of time away from all of this. I guess you could call it a sabbatical, but uh, it really is nice to be back. And uh, let's see if I still have the skills to uh, punch out these videos. Currently, we have a bit of a lax in the rain, so let's see if I can power through this. If there's a little bit of rain noise, I do apologize. But rather than late than never, Let's get ahead and talk about my favourite pens from 2019. And if I'm honest, 2019 wasn't a huge fountain pens year for me. Um, a lot of stuff happened and, um, you know, just to put it simply, um, fountain pens were on a little bit of the back burner. And instead of being the front bit of my life, uh, it's actually been a bit on the, you know, more passive thing on my life. And I think doing that allowed me to get a bit more of a perspective on fountain pens, um, how I actually use them in my everyday life, not constantly jotting down notes in a more reviewer sense of the fashion. I sort of just let them, just let them be a part of my everyday life like they used to be. And I think that was really nice. It's made me get a new love for fountain pens and just a different perspective. Um, the pens that I'm talking about on this list are the pens that I enjoyed the most in 2019. Some of these I haven't done reviews on yet. I absolutely will do reviews on them, but let's just get this list out of the way. And starting off, let's talk about this. This is the Parker 45. It's a pen that was sent to me by a really good friend of mine. Thank you so much, Bill. This pen has been such a joy to use because Parker pens have always being something that I've had a huge love for. I think it stems back to being one of my first pens, being a Parker Sonnet. The Parker 45 is, like a lot of you might know, a hooded nibbed fountain pen. And hooded nibbed fountain pens aren't my preferred type of nib. I prefer a big nib where you get a little bit of line variation. And I've always sort of shunned uh, hooded nibbed fountain pens because I've always found them sort of boring to use, not much line variation. But this one here has been an utter joy to use. This one was my everyday carry pen for quite a few months and it's just a very nice pen. First of all, minimalistic, a very nice classic design, which I really do like. The thing that I like about Parkers, especially the Sonnets, the Jotters, even the Duofold, they're very nice classic designs, which I think is very, very nice. It's not overstated, it's just very nice and classic. And as an everyday carry pen, this pen is very good. One thing Parker pens are always great at doing is being reliable as hell. I can go a week, two weeks without using this pen and pretty much the time I take off the cap and start writing with this, this pen is gonna work every single time. And it's a joy to write with. It's butter smooth, it's very comfortable to use. You know, there's nothing wrong about this pen. It's an utter joy to use. And these pens are pretty affordable on the used market because Parker, unfortunately, don't make these anymore. But um, no, just a very nice pen to use. Something that can be chucked in your backpack and brought out whenever. It's very nice indeed. The next pen that I enjoyed using in 2019 was this. This is the Pen BBS 322. I actually did a review about it, I don't know, six or seven months ago. And I gotta say, the Pen BBS 322 is wonderful. First of all, Pen BBS, I have a lot of those pens lined up to make reviews on. They're a really cool company coming out of China. And this one here was the first pen BBS that I ever got and it set the standards really high. First of all, even though that it is a new fountain pen brand coming out of China, they do stick to their roots. This is obviously a clone of the Pilot 78G. 
And for those of you who don't know, like Parker's, I have a very big love of the Pilot 78G because put it simply, it was the first fountain pen that I ever bought with my own money. And it was a fountain pen that I used for God, close to eight months before I got my first Parker. So I do have a big love of the Pilot 78G's aesthetics, the ergonomics. So I might be looking at this pen through rose colored glasses. But one of the cool things about this pen, unlike a lot of the other knockoffs from Wingsung, is they have a very, very different type of nib and a very, very different, um, I guess, feeling nib because unlike any of the other wing songs that I've used or any other pilot uh, knockoffs this one here has a lot of flex in the nib it's a lot of fun to write with and even though that a lot of people don't like the ergonomics I find this a really comfortable pen to use it's not the most reliable pen I will be honest most of the time when I am using this I am using it for more fun because you can get a lot of line variation but you know, at the end of the day, I enjoy using this pen. It's given me a lot of hours of fun. Uh, what can I say? I enjoy using this pen so much. And considering that it is one of the more cheaper options from Pen BBS, I think I only paid $8 for this pen. Uh, what, what can I say? I enjoyed using it. Great pen. And I'm going to use it for a long time coming. The next pen I want to talk about is, of course, another Pen BBS. This one here is the Pen BBS 308. It's a more mainstream looking sort of pen than the 322, and it's also a lot bigger and a lot thicker than the 322. And aesthetically, it's a lot nicer aesthetically. This is one of the more cheaper options, and it's also one of the first type of um, um, models that came out of the pen BBS 308 and um, I've got to say it is a very nice looking pen The only downside of this is unfortunately you get a lot of swirls on one side and on the other It's a little bit bare, so I'm not sure if they fixed this. I hope they have but um, Even if they haven't fixed it there are a lot of design styles of this pen and I really do uh, like it as well as that, the uh, ergonomics of this is very, very nice. It's very nice to hold, and the nib is probably one of the best looking nibs on the Chinese market. Honestly, it really looks nice. It looks like a sailor nib. It's very nice indeed. The one thing that I don't like about it though is the nib and actually how it writes. It actually took me a long time to actually like it because Unlike a lot of the Chinese nibs that you get, it's actually the ball of um, tipping is actually bent up at the end if you look at it through like a jeweler's loop or a microscope. And that provides a very different type of writing than a lot of other pens. Instead of being buttery smooth, for me, it was very scratchy. So I had to stick with it. I had to polish it a little bit. And after writing with it for a long time, I really did fall in love with it. Um, the other thing that I didn't like at first was that this nib was a lot harder than I was expecting. Uh, for me, it was almost as hard as nails. And as someone who loves line variation in writing, this pen took a lot of time to get used to. However, I stuck with it, I kept writing, and in the end, I found it very nice to use once I'd polished it up and everything because this pen is very good for taking quick notes, it's good for long writing sessions, and it's just so comfortable. And the cool thing is, I also did eye drop this pen, and this pen's great for eye dropping. Eye dropping. It lasted me months on end, and at only about 20 something dollars, I think this is a pretty cool pen for what it is. Super excited for what Pen BBS has in the future. And the final pen that I loved in 2019 is a pen I've been meaning to get my hands on for a very long time. This is the Pilot Kakuno. This pen has been around for, God, three years now. And I don't know why I never bothered to get it, but about half a year ago, I was in Officeworks and I saw this pen on sale for about $20 and I said, why not? Let's go ahead and, and grab it because well, let's just say, let's take a minute to um, pay our respects for my Pilot Prera, which unfortunately isn't around anymore. So I was itching to get another Pilot pen, and I guess this is the one. This one here is the light gray, 
and I guess off-white version. And while I would have preferred to get the white version, which unfortunately is in pretty low, pretty low supply because of the high demand for it compared to the other colors, but I thought might as well go ahead and grab a pilot pen because pilot pens are always really good. And honestly, this one here is no exception. For $22, I was pretty happy with this pen, except for the fact that they don't provide a converter, which is unfortunately. Thankfully, I had a whole bunch of the cheap squeeze converters in it, and I gotta say, this pen is classic um, mainstream Pilot, and I use that as a compliment because one of the things that I love about Pilot is the nib. The mainstream Pilot nib, while it is a little bit small, has always been a joy to write with. This one here is the medium nib, and it's just, it really is one of the best nibs I've ever used. It's buttery smooth, you can use it for hours on end, there's a nice amount of flex in it, though there isn't all that much line variation, but on a pen like this, it really doesn't matter. This is easily my favorite nib that I've ever used. The Pilot Mainstream Medium Nib is just great. You find it on the Prera, Pilot 78G, Pilot Metropolitan. It's just, it, it is the nib that I like. In terms of aesthetics, yeah, the aesthetics aren't on point. Um, it really is a very different type of pen to a lot of other Pilot pens, though for only $23, which is a lot less than a Pilot Prera, I'm happy to put up with it. And considering that this is a pen that you can also just chuck in your backpack, leave it for a couple weeks and then use it, and it will write, I think that is all right. I'm pretty sure this pen is made of ABS, and like other ABS pens, they're hard as nails. There's no way that you can scratch these. They are durable as hell. The only thing that I don't like about it is you can't really eye drop it, unless you do put a little bit of epoxy down the back because there are holes, which I know is to prevent, you know, choking, because it is a choking hazard, but uh, I don't know. JPL likes to eye drop his pens. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I guess that's pretty much it for my fountain pens of 2019. While it is a bit of a small list, it is a list that I think is pretty comprehensive of the pens that I enjoy using. I really do enjoy using these pens, and I guess with that said, let's jump into a quick writing sample to show you how these pens write. Okay everyone, welcome to the writing sample. Let me fill the pen BBS up with some Waterman Purple Ink, and we can get this underway. Haven't done this for a while, so let's hope I still have <laughs> the writing skills. So, I guess how can you lose writing skills? It's sort of sort of like riding a bike. Note to self, Joshy, don't get your hand in the way. We're turning over a new leaf, and I'm going to try my best not to get my hand in the way during these writing samples. Uh, I do apologise for the potato that this is being recorded on this week. Had a few issues with the proper DSLR. So it's going to be written, well, it's going to be recorded on a webcam. Uh, the paper that I'm using is a paper by Milligram. It's really cool paper that I got and I've enjoyed using. This is my second pad of this. So uh, let's jump into the writing sample. First off, the pen at BBS. Three, two, two, one. I think this has the fine nib. It's always pretty ambiguous when you buy pens from China. But this is probably the fine nib and this pen obviously is using Waterman's Tender Purple Ink. I really do like this. Uh, I've had it for years. I've had few issues with it. Quick writing sample. Hand out of the way. And as you can see, pretty standard writing sample. I enjoy writing with the pen, though writing long form is really not this pen's uh, strong point. Slow down and squeeze some lovely line variation.
kind of mucked up that W, but you get what I mean. You get some really nice line variation and you can create some really beautiful writing with this. Yes, it is a little bit scratchy, but I think that's because I did push down the nibble a little bit too hard sometimes and it sort of has spread the tines, but honestly, I can deal with it. In terms of the line variation, that's it with no pressure and that's it with pressure. It is just amazing. I really do like these types of nibs. Moving on, let's have a look at the Pen DDS 308. This pen I have obviously um, polished a little bit with uh, some 12,000 grit sandpaper. So it is a little bit uh, smoother than some other people's pens would be, but let's have a look at it. This is the pen. Yes, this is the 308. This has the extra fine or the 0.38 millimeter nib. And this is obviously using Robert Oster's Australian Sky Blue. Anyone who knows me knows I really do like uh, light blue inks, turquoise ink. It's just something that I've always liked. Quick writing sample. And as you can see in that writing sample, I had no issue whatsoever. One thing I like about this nib is you can get some really nice variation in the uh, shading of the ink. I think that's very nice. Though, as I said, I'm not a huge fan of this nib. It really is stiff as nails. Yes, you get a little, very, little bit of variation in the writing naturally due to the way that the nib is sort of bent up at an angle, sort of like that. So it is a very different type of feeling nib, I guess. It feels very different, but it is very nice to write with. And as I've said, I've had no issues, uh, but the only thing I don't like, this is the pen with no pressure, and this is probably as far amount of the pressure I would wanna push. And that is a lot of pressure indeed. Yes, you do get different shading, but it is still a hard as nails nib. Though, it does make up for it because it is one hell of a nice looking nib. Very nice indeed. Next, Pilot Kikuno. And one thing that I did fail to mention in the, I guess, review quotation marks is the nib because um, it has a lovely smiling face and that is something that I have just fallen in love with. I love the smiley face on the nib. God, I wish my other manufacturers would do it. So, Pilot. And as you can probably hear, this is just a buttery smooth sounding nib. No scratchiness with it whatsoever. This has Pilot's medium nib, and the ink that I'm using is just a little bit of my own mix. I think it was just uh, Pilot, um, Pilot Black ink, and I think it was... Um, some green food coloring I had in. It has this really weird look to it. You know, it's gonna run out in a little bit and I'll probably change it. But um, if it does look like an off black, yeah, that's kind of my fault. Well, I think I do know. And once again, what a beautiful pen this is to write with. It has one of those ergonomic grips, which I've come to like over the past couple of years since I started reviewing pens, except this one here is very subtle. This is a very nice pen to write with. It's not super light, even though that is a completely plastic pen. And writing with it is just a joy. It's so buttery smooth. Yes, you don't get that much line variation with it, but when you want to jot down notes, do you really want to do fancy, fancy writing like this? You know, it really is up to you, but for me, this is just one of the best note-taking pens out there. 
The pilot mainstream nib is just brilliant. Can I give this nib any more praise? I don't know. It really is something that I have fallen in love with. And finally, let's talk about the Parker 45. Hopefully I'll have a review coming out of this soon. Parker 45. This has a medium nib. And in this, I think it's just regular noodless black. Anyone who knows me also knows that this is probably the most common ink that I use. It's, what can I say, it's brilliant. One of the best inks I've ever been introduced to. I've literally never had a problem with this ink in any pen and it just works. It really does just work. But here we go. And as you can see there, this is also a really nice note-taking pen. It's just so comfortable to hold in the hand. Uh, there's literally no transition between the barrel and the cap. It's so nicely balanced. Yes, it is a rear balanced pen, but because the cap literally just lies in your palm like that, it, whatever you'd call this, um, it's just so comfortable. It's nice. The nib is buttery smooth. I've used so many Parkers over the years and they are all very nicely ground pens. Some of them are, I guess, hard as nails. I think the Pilot, uh, sorry, the Parker Jota, that absolutely is sort of a hard as nails pen. But the grinding in these pens are, there's nothing over the top about them. They're not fancy, you know, pens with, um, you know, those weird Kingfisher, um, you know, those weird nibs that look like that. But um, end of the day, they're very nice mainstream pens. This one's no different. I love writing with it. In terms of line variation, you actually can get a little bit of line variation out of this, which is a little bit odd for a hooded nib fountain pen. Huh? Though, even if you do slow down, huh? The only difference you're really going to notice is in the amount of the ink being deposited. But you can get some nice writing out of it. But for the most part, I'd stick to writing notes. And this is really where it excels at. And with that, that is another My Favourite Fountain Pens from 2019. And I guess my luck has also turned because... Uh, during the whole course of the filming, the rain stopped, which uh, I guess is a sign of good things to come. Um, it's nice to be back, I guess that's another thing that I want to say, and I hope you guys stick around because i got a lot of pen reviews coming. i got a lot of stuff, i got a lot of pens to review, uh, i got a big stack of them, and um, apart from that, thank you very much for watching, thank you very much for sticking around.